we continue to commit crimes on all these things. So I thought Nagesh Shikde is the best man. He's such a learned person, Nagesh Shikdeji. He had written so many books on animals, on birds, on earth, on everything he has written. And writing and uh, speaking is one aspect that is preaching. But Nagesh Day, I am very much impressed because he practices what he preaches. That is very, very important. And he has never made whatever he has learned, whatever knowledge he has got, has never made it commercial or a business. He is a very, very devoted personality for the cause of environmental issues. I know he has been fighting every day for protecting this great earth, great nature. And he has taken it as a mission of his life. That is very, very important. After I became the State Chief Commissioner of Karnataka, we have been every year celebrating this day. Scouts and guides right from the day one, they have been celebrating, uh, I think, 48th year this year. 48th year happens to be the World Environmental Day, which was started by UN. But this year, we give special importance, the importance for the reason we are caught up in this pandemic. And in my humble opinion, it is because we have spoiled enough this nature, we are suffering this pandemic. We do not know what is going to be for us, for us tomorrow. I am sure Mr. Nagarajan being a renowned scientist, who has dedicated all his life for protecting the environmental issues he is addressing today. I don't want to come in between you and Nagesh Ekde for more time. I have all the respects for his great integrity which he has maintained. I was puzzled when I learned, when I read his book on birds. One bird for 11 days, 11,000 kilometers it flies without resting. I was wondering how is it possible. Then I had to ask him only through my common friends like Mohan Kumar Kondaji, one of our uh, scouts leader and uh, many others environmentalists. I came to know Nagesh Ekde. It has been my pleasure. And I know he wants to protect so many things on the earth. I am sure all of you will join us in protecting this, this environment. I, sir, I am really from the deep of my heart, I am impressed by your personality. You are a role model. I am telling you, I may not be able to follow whatever you say, but for me, you are a role model. With this, for this great organization of scouts and guides in the country and particularly in Karnataka with 7 lakhs membership, today thousands of uh, youngsters, maybe lakh also, are watching this. I am sure they will all take a message from these celebrations and practice in their life. Thank you, sir. I promise you, I will try to do my best till my last breath to protect the environment. That's all I can give as a Guru Dakshana to Nagesh Agde. Okay? Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you, Commissioner Sindhyaji, for your nice words, sometimes exaggerated versions of my personality. Anyway, thank you very much and wish you all a very happy World Environment Day, friends. Especially this year's Environment Day is particularly uh, very interesting in the sense that we are through a very serious pandemic. We are through a very serious series of crises. You know, we all have heard about the Amphan cyclone in the east and now Nisarga cyclone in the west and near Delhi we have all these locust minis coming like almost like a cyclone. But this is also a very interesting year because for the past two years, two months, we've been witnessing fantastic refreshing of nature, refreshing or rebooting we can say. You know, because we stayed at home, because most of our industries have come to a standstill, because most of our 
traffic has become almost come to, has come to the standstill our nature has time to recover quite a number of our streams and lakes have become very clear free of all dull all dirt and filth the air has become so clear and somebody even could see up to 200 beyond 200 kilometers a series of uh, the himalayan mountains also it's fantastic we had never witnessed witnessed this kind of clarity in in our atmosphere in our water on our land and there is silence all around as if you know we have gone back 200 years and this also gives us a time to think what all have we done what are our daily activities why are we so so uh, pathetic to our environment why we are destroying our environment actually we have chosen june 5th as the world environment day and we keep greeting in fact we should keep greeting every day happy environment day because environment is around us throughout the year we keep polluting the environment throughout the year we keep we should keep on talking about the environment in whichever uh, capacity you are whether you are a student whether you are an officer whether you are a politician or an administrator or a police or a lawyer or a judge or media person each one of us has a very important role to play in order to keep this earth in a very balanced state this year the slogan given to us by the unep world uh, environmental commission the slogan is biodiversity and there is an answer to all our problems in nature we must go back to nature that's a very significant very significant slogan and in a, in a way we have gone back to nature already for, for the past two months and then what is this biodiversity i would like to begin with a little uh, primer on what is biodiversity some people say when they say a huge a huge cluster of greenery they say yes biodiversity is rich diversity we know we especially we in karnataka or if you happen to be around bangalore udupi utta andre gottirbek nimage yestu variety irutte adal si irutte huni irutte kara irutte palle irutte sambar irutte majjige huni irutte diversity eight or 10 varieties of edible things very attractive very at aromatic and tasty things are all over your plate if you go to some places maybe gulbarga or maybe in bihar the plate is yes you have a paratha there you have something like a chana pudi salt and pepper not that i am not blaming them at all i am not denigrating their food style that is their style culture so comparing a, a food plate in bihar and in karnataka you can see our is a diverse food similarly you can see around the nation whole nation is a diverse nation the most uh, diversity the yeah, maximum diversity we can see in, in our nation compared to say for example if you go to japan or china in china everybody is chinese <laughs> in mongolia everybody is mongolian if you go to africa yes everybody is negros there if you go to the western countries yes you have a caucasian feature there but in india you have everybody you have blacks browns whites tall short and we have got diverse religion diverse taste diverse culture diverse dresses and everything is so diverse so diversity is the essence of life diversity is the very essence of evolution also so let's let's see what is it that we see in nature as a diversity one for example uh, shall you go to the first slide i'll i'll go to a, i'll show a slide in which you have uh, antarctica for example you have alaska can you see this slide there what is the next slide alaska yes so if you take a notebook and try to find out the number of species there in that place 
How many you can count? Yes, you can see a polar bear there. Maybe some seals you can see. Some whales here and there. Some varieties of fishes. Maybe five, six different species. That's all. Now, if you go to a different place, for example, if you go to an oasis in any of the Arabian countries, there again diversity is few. I mean, what you can see is that the date form you can see there. You can see an oasis. And if you really have happened to go there, yes, you might see a camel, an Arab citizen there. How many species can you count there? Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at the most nine, ten. If you start counting the uh, kind of mites that could be there in the tail of camel, yeah, eleven, and some little crabs in hidden in the sand, okay, twelve, thirteen at the most. That's all. Now, if you come to tundra, if you come to grasslands, ah, here you can see a large number of species. Notebook, you can go from 50, 60, 80, 100, 150, if you start counting all the birds in the sky and all the little big animals and the fungi and all those grass and plant species, yeah, it might go up to 100, 150. Now, if you happen to come to our land, Western grass, for example, and I'll tell you, the notebook will not be sufficient. If you happen to go to and stand on the bank of a small lake anywhere there, if you start counting the number of species right from the bottom of the lake, all the kind of you know water dwelling species, then up there, grass, and all the kinds of uh, birds that are waiting for those fish and crab and um, frog etc etc and then if you will start looking up on the ground and the tree and the shrub trees up there in the sky and it's gone go on counting 200 300 species there so now we can clearly say which is rich in terms of biodiversity go to the next one for example here also you can see Thousands of, what are they, you know? I had shown you earlier, Antarctic. Now we are going to Antarctica. You see penguins, thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand. But there is no diversity at all. That is almost a kind of a uniform, single species dominant area there. Again, if you get into the water, of course, you might see krills. You might see whales. You might see yeah, other different species of penguin themselves, but no, that's all. Now, similarly, we also suppose you come to Kolar, for example, some stretches of Kolar. You see eucalyptus, vast stretches of land, eucalyptus. This is not a biodiversity area. This is, uh, I don't know what you call the opposite of biodiversity, but there's a scant variety of species. Now, we'll, now we have a fair idea of what it is. Here I'm showing you showing, showing a map stretching from Chennai to Bangalore to Mangalore, almost a straight line. And if you start from Chennai, start taking an aircraft or maybe you imagine you are, in a, you are a bird and start flying, you know, Tamil Nadu, a large part of it is <clears throat> arid land semi-dry land, maybe some little forest patches here and there, come to Kolar, slowly, slowly it is becoming green. Come to Tumkur, little greener there, go to Hassan, much, much more greener, then you enter the Western Ghats. Then you enter the ocean there. Immensely diverse uh, form of uh, species are there in the ocean also. So from east to west, you have continuous diversity. Stop. If you stretch that line straight beyond the Arabian Sea, you know what you will get? You will get Ethiopia. You will get Somalia. But let's not go to that. Let's stop there. Now, I'll show you what uh, Yeah, the same thing in a, in a geographical pattern. This is the Western Ghats. This happens to be the year of biodiversity 
I'm going to dwell a little more on the diverse species, flora and fauna of the Western Ghats. For example, you come to this place. This actually is modified by human beings. Otherwise, this was a thick hill. And beyond the hill, you can see one of the top 12 top biological hotspots of the planet. That is, I'm go to the next one there. Yes. Oh, here it is. There are so many rivers, rivulets, waterfalls, lakes, and of course, continuously uh, flowing down and down perennial rivers there, streams. And immensely from the top of the waterfall to the bottom, you can count the number of unusual species. Some of the insectivore species also you can see because that is a very peculiar environmental condition. Throughout the year, you have rainfall there as far as the species are concerned. So there's an immense, immensely diverse network of species evolved, both plant and animal. Again, here, it, the number of species might go beyond 200, 300. Go to the next one. Um, yeah. Amazing, if you start watching, if you have some little extra uh, equipment with you, maybe a magnifying glass and a binocular, you can keep uh, seeing. That was the flying, um, what is it, Haruavoti, celebrated in uh, Tejasvi's book. So this is lion tail macaque, again, very unique species confined to only southern India. Next to the one, I'm going to deal a little more. This is uh, uh, Martin, again, a different kind of species. This is red squirrel. Good. Next one. Next one. Crab. Next one. This is very interesting. This is called, go back. This is called, this is recently discovered three years ago. This is called Harry Potter's spider. This spider has a Harry Potter cap kind of a thing. And then can you see there Malabar hornbill, little one there? Oh, each one of these species is so unique. And biologists are so thrilled to understand the biological uh, cycle of such one. This I know quite a number of you are very familiar with this one. This is King Cobra. The only variety of serp um, serpentine this is only variety of snake which eats only other snakes. You know the other uh, characteristics of this king cobra? That's the only snake which builds nest for its eggs. Some unique characteristics. It looks, it looks uh, majestic, it looks so big, but it rarely bites people. You have seen many people catching them. It's up to 13, 14, up to 18 feet long. And it is there on the a very narrow strip of the Western Ghats. Next one, please. And this is, these are called the knee roots. Uh, these are in the continuously, there's a swampy area in the Western Ghats. You have very unique species there. Some of the species are supposed to be you know, 200 million years old, remain there unevolved. These are knee roots. The same tree takes its root up there and down below. And the botanists think that it is because of, you know, it wants to absorb some oxygen there. So some of these swamps are biologically very important one. And the species that dwell around there. Can you imagine this looks almost like a plastic rope. Next one, please. Uh, and this is called Shola forest. Again, you know, the grassland that you see, both grassland and a dense uh, perennial forest there, they are very unique again. Almost the skies, these clouds are kissing the sky and again, moisture laden thing. Throughout the year, you have good greenery, grazing land. That's why you have a lot of herbivorous plant grazing there throughout the year. Because there are herbivorous plants, you have carnivorous plant uh, species inside there. You have, again, 30, 40 varieties of mammals you can see there. This is a Shola forest. Next one, please. This again, another 
different species of snakes this you know the, the uh, what cat is it called this is civet cat and coffee planters love this cat so much because if this cat eats the coffee beans next day you can see this cat you can scan it coffee beans are still there in its feces and it will have a very unique aroma and that aroma that coffee fetches tremendous price in the market especially in the indonesia i'm told have there's a great demand for this lua coffee anyway go to the next species now here is a list of uh, very endemic species it's in canada odakadre uh, it is a red spotted cat civet cat striped neck mongoose brown mongoose nilgiri martin grizzled giant squirrel nilgiri thar uh, lion tail macaque nilgiri langur these are all very unique large size species when you come down to the micro species yes you can see in this chart there are 140 uh, mammal species and nearly 510 bird species can you imagine Five, this morning i was in lalbag yes lalbag harbor uh, harbors around attracts around 170 bird species this is 570 and then you have reptiles 260 and then amphibians people are still discovering new and new species of amphibians there such an such an amazing receptacle of nature's bounty there next one please. and yes can you see that what i am showing in that arrow yellow arrow is a coconut tree you can imagine now how giant could that be it looks it's a dry one if you go now there it's all fully clean what a wonderful nature next one please such a thing and people are trying to find out what are the can canopy species you know elsewhere in the world there are scientists specialized in um, counting the number of species in the canopy they say they are altogether different some of the species never reach the earth at all they get born there they live their full life and they become part of the life cycle there but then they the life will be over they will never reach down but unfortunately what we keep doing is that yes the next species is some of them are amazing orchids it's a saint orchid the next one is yeah, there's a bird orchid there it is this looks like almost you know thai citizen dancer go back there again it's almost like a dancer with a huge uh, uh, cap and some kind of a hexagon artist you know the chest um, panel there and the wings are as as if it's it is understood human culture you know it's imitating it next one i can show absolutely like bird and the one below that purple colored one it is almost like a fly it's a flower and that fly stinks a lot stinks only at night it attracts male flies and then pollination takes place this photo i have taken in tejasvi's um, mudigere backyard amazing diver this this species the lion tail macaque wherever it walks it is enriching the biodiversity throughout while it flies from this to area to that area it collects lots of seeds both in its mouth in its paws in its hand as well as along its in its body wherever it goes yes this is also the uh, squirrel species next one this is the web of life all along this uh, all through the history we have been taught that man is in the pinnacle man is the um, supreme most species on this web of life that is a wrong thing the right thing is man is one among all this entire biosphere biosphere man is not in no way he is unique having said all this we now have to get into the ah we get into the i see what is what i am showing is that one one legislator is asking the people aranya ilake netta gidagalannella kadadaki 
you extend your farmland encroach upon the farmland don't care for these forest officials this unexpectedly it happened to me here so it was not my uh, intention uh, some in for the past 200 years especially during the past 50 60 years we have been entering into biodiversity we have been decimating biodiversity empowering instead of empowering people we are empowering the nature you know there are e ecosystem diversity which I, I as i told you in india we have three four varieties of ecosystems you know, himalayan ecosystems Nagar's ecosystem desert ecosystem and grassland ecosystem and dryland ecosystem within each ecosystem we have species diversity for example so many varieties of species as we have seen in the western Ghats. among one species for example one genetic diversity within suppose take frogs amphibians so many varieties of frogs are there so this is what is diversity understanding that will help us to understand what nature is but as i told you because of the economic attraction incidentally today's slogan is what nature has answer to all our problems in fact that was the tragedy for man's every requirement he was diving into nature he was hurting the nature he was encroaching upon the nature yes in the process what we have done we have increased our um increase the number of uh, species in fact each number for example enormously we have increased cattle species we enormously sheep are there enormously our birds most favorite bird is a chicken is at the cost of the real so many other mammals birds you know whatever is required for us we don't care destroying all other species and to promote those which are required for us both economically not only just for the money or not only for fashion for habit for tobacco plantation i should have shown you in the edges of western guards how much of forest is cleared for growing things that are not required for our body at all uh, i'll come to that a little later i'll show you a series of quick photographs what diversity means this is one set of photographs taken by a friend of mine in near Banwasi. He was sitting in his uh, balcony and there was a papaya tree. He just set up a camera there. See, first what you see, what you see is um, quail. What do you call? Kogile. And then go to the next one. This is a female. This is a crow. Next one. Oh, this is a male crow. Oh, mm, what do you call? Because the, the neck you can just recognize. Next to you. Next one. What is the next one? Ha. Huh. What is this? Can somebody say? Marakutiga. What is it called in English? You can find out. And this is Malbar hornbill. Same tree, same fruit. And this is a female hornbill. Next one. Next one. Oh, this is a, we will see barbet another bird next one we see butterflies also coming there next one yeah squirrel and the last one coming there is a very relative of human beings huh? yes he wants the whole fruit for himself almost like human beings huh? see sitting on a window on a balcony and one single tree with fruit can attract so many species and remember, these are the species only they eat fruits and nuts. And, and there are other species which are, um, as I told you earlier, they eat insects, they eat birds, and birds eat other species. There are any number of species. Now we are, without caring about the wealth of the land, we keep on destroying, sometimes for very, very little puny benefit. I'll explain that at all later on. Next one, please. Yeah, we have imported this eucalyptus from Australia. Go back to that. 
go back to that. This is so what I term as the green desert. This was brought to Mysore just to so that Mysore had an excessive uh, what we call aquatic space there. Lot many uh, water bodies were there. Too much of moisture and also the the Mysore Maharajas was told that this tree can absorb tree or can absorb water. So it was brought to suck away the water and now it is spread all over the state. And it is sucking water, sucking water continuously. And that eucalyptus tree does not harbor any birds and it does not allow any other species to go and grow underneath nearby also. Here is a, yes, we have this um, Ranganthi too bird sanctuary. Go to the next one. And then, yes, we, wherever we see water bodies, we want that to come to the city first. It has to quench our thrust. This, uh, on a Etina uh, Hole, small river, and they want to supply water to Chikbalapu, Kola, and Tunku, and of course, they wanted to supply it to all these areas which are in the eastern extreme of the state, bringing water up the western parts through the plains and to a faraway land. Enormous amount of money is being spent. And then this is this kind of a decision is, are taken, keeping only the requirement of the urban people. And at times, you know what happens? One person's decision can really, really upset the ecological balance. There's a saying, you must have heard about black magic. Black magic, there is an enemy fellow there in some two kilometers away or so. What you do, you take a lemon, puncture it with a needle. And the fellow there suffers a serious accident and he loses his leg. That kind of black magic is existing even now and that is existing in bureaucracy. That's what our famous poet Puti Narsim Machar was jocularly telling. Gotan Ro, our magic ki la, black magic yuglu ide. Al putavro, vidan sodal putavro, adanna agar marta idare. Vyatyasa yen andre, whenever they put their signature on a file, suddenly hundreds of acres of forest is destroyed. Suddenly, okay, permission can be granted for all the microhydal, 130 microhydal projects in the Western Ghats. He puts a small signature there. Suddenly, hundreds of big companies start going to the Western Ghats, cut the trees, make a road there, put dynamites there, blast rocks there and build a little dam there and then destroy a stretch of thing. 174 micro hydel areas have been now created. They all have become near desert lake. One signature, one bureaucrat, one politician, at times one Swamiji can really transform this society by either passing a good message or passing a destructive message altogether. So it's very essential. I'll show you, show you what is happening. There's a great demand for building a highway through Western Ghats. There's already one, two, three, actually four. And the fifth one is being built there. There are railway lines being built there. There are power lines, transmission lines going there. And nobody knows how many nocturnal species lose their lives how there is a fragmentation, what is called, you know, if you, in a vast stretch of dense forest, if you make a line in between, whether it's a railroad, whether it's a concrete or metal road, or whether it's a power transmission line, you fragment the thing. The species from this side to that side, there's a sudden demarcation, they can't move from this side to that side. And that is a, there's a turmoil there. We keep on fragmenting the biodiversity. Uh, rich biodiversity areas. Go to the next one. This is what is what we see on the highways, especially through um, Nagarhole, 
and then to Kerala. Now there is a great demand for a, an extra highway to Kerala, and they, it is they close down that highway during night time, but they want us to open that so that the buses can fly through that. Next one, please. This is lion tail macaque. We have uh, luckily our forest department was very sensitive. I mean, for the demand of the people, we have created largest number of uh, biodiversity protection area in in Karnataka. We have very unusual protected areas. We have we we have the nation's only one lion tail macaque protection area in Sharavati Valley. We have only one hornbill protection area in Dandeli. We have the only country's only uh, sloth bear protection area near Hampi. We have only one otter protection area. We have the largest number of tigers in the country. We are nearly the largest number of elephants in the country. But then there are only the big species. Small species we are yet to count. But look at the destruction that we are carrying. We are the one thing that every year that used to happen is forest fire, especially February and March. This, I don't know how to relate it, but during this COVID, COVID pandemic, we had least number of forest fires. That clearly goes to show that most of these fires are caused by human beings. Next one, please. And the number of species that can be. Uh, I wish I could tell you a little story, but we don't have to. Uh, I'll skip this story, okay? It's a very interesting story. How uh, about, go ahead. Now, if at all we have time, we can come back to this. We can go, go to the next one. Uh, we, are, we are running short of time. Mm, go to the next, next, next. Uh, yes. Uh, we, I was talking about the locust thing. Sometimes what happens, there's a kind of a surge in animal species or insect species. I can give you any number of examples. Search, that means large number of species, suddenly large number of, uh, um, say for example, insect, suddenly starts spreading around. And that's a menace that's now being faced by Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Haryana, even UPLs. Millions, why millions? Billions of locusts keep coming and keep swallowing everything that's green and converting them into almost like dry jadu, you know, dry what, broomstick. And they move on. And then we have, we have, you know, uh, a, a, this is a kind of an annual menace elsewhere in the country. For example, in Africa, they knew very familiar, it is very familiar for them to have locust migrating everywhere. They, but Africans, they eat locust. They're not very, they're very familiar with handling, how to handle them all. And then, but we are, at times, it, it, this year it has moved from Africa to some of the Gulf countries and then to Afghanistan, Baluchistan, Pakistan, and then to India. We have been following, there is a locust observatory there in Faridabad. We've been watching, yes, it's coming from, this swarm is coming from that direction in the west. It is there in Afghanistan, slowly moving towards Pakistan. We should have gone there. We should have prevented it. We should have cooperated with Afghanistan and Pakistan. We could have helped them. Let us stop that. There are so many means of stopping. We delayed action. Yeah, I know we delayed action in so many other categories also. Look at the way the locust attack a tree and remove everything greenery whether it's a shoot or a flower or fruit, or even the bark of the tree. They just make the tree naked. And sometimes, look at this, this is a Jodhpur town. If you look carefully, they are all you know, on a concrete terrace, you can see. Actually, what you can do is take a spade and fill it in a basket that you can do. What we have done now, we have started beginning the action quite late and we are spraying Spraying pesticide as I showed the first one. Go to the first one. We have been using stronger and stronger pesticide. Yes. To how but to what extent are you going to keep spraying it? All over the tree. Okay, one tree, ten trees. 
all over the field, acres and acres, up to five square kilometers. One night they could stay there. But then we are using all kinds of pesticides. We know that we have been using this kind of things on, on COVID patients also, suspected COVID patients also. Enormous quantity of pesticide. And once you spray, it is not only the locust that will die, all the other species that are there are uh, harboring that tree will be forever gone. And even the crown there will be so poisonous. It won't, you know, they, there won't be any earthworms also. It's a total destruction. Partial, it was a destruction by the nature. Now we are going to do a total destruction. That's a very strange thing. But there is an easier, organic way of handling it. As I showed you in the last part one on the terrace, there's heaps and heaps of, um, you can go to that. You can easily scoop them all and fill it up in a bag and convert it into very useful organic manure. You can produce oil out of that. You can produce fodder, an animal feed out of that. Very lowly feed. I can't recommend that you must eat that. In Africa, they do it. It's supposed to be very tasty. But food, uh, animals food can be produced out of that. Once you do that, for example, in this Jodhpur, there won't be the left uh, locust left there. Maybe only 10% will go to the next town. You could have used that provided we had a proper planning. That's where we lack. Go to the last, I'm coming to the last one. Yes. Oh, this is how, what I'm, what I have been telling you is the necessity to understand the mechanism of nature, respect the biodiversity and ensure that we are all aware of this, how to protect these biodiversities, how we can make further use of that. For example, medicine, for example, industrial uses, for example, such and that need not be any purpose at all, for economic purpose at all. It is required for our next generation, next generation. As Gandhiji said, seventh generation from now should also be able to enjoy the life as much as we do it. Are we ensuring that? We must ensure that we should keep the nature as sacred and sacrosanct. Huh? Thank you. Oh, uh, I think that's for the time being, we can stop it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Sindhya ji is instructing or sending messages that we can have a little more. Can we go to the few more slides? Yes, I showed you earlier one papaya tree with so many, so many mammal species and even insects coming there. Here is another similar photograph taken by another friend of mine. Here, one little fruit of a supporter tree, and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six birds coming there, two insects, honeybees and bumblebees coming there. One single. Oh, so that is the kind of thing. Nature, after all, nature offers the bounty not only to speech. In fact, human beings come at the last one. Before that, nature was offering it to anybody and everybody to come and take. But now we have become so greedy that only it's everything is for me and mankind. That attitude should be changed. I was, uh, Commissioner Sindhyaji was talking about some of the migrating birds. What I just showed you is a migrating locust. There are so many other species migrate, migrating. Birds, for example, this pectoral sandpiper, small bird, it from Mongolia to South America, 12,000 kilometers, it travels all the way. I'll show you another species. There are so many species which are migratory champions. This is uh, northern wheat, wheat, uh, wheat here. Fish is, this is just, you know, it's a fish size. Musti Gatrada, Putta Fakshir, Yelindavata, Alaska, almost on top of America and Canada. Alinda Hartman Varata 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 South Africa or Ibrate, Ali other nest Madi, Makalana baby will not sit Marcon of Wapos all the way to fourteen thousand kilometers. Travel Marcon Rogate, Yellow Kuda rest for work. Andre, even for example, earlier than Bert or Torsinala, 
ಅದು ಕೂಡ ಹಿಮಾಲಯದ ಮೇಲೆ ದಾಟ್ಕೊಂಡು 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 ಬರ್ತದೆ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಶೋ ಯು ದಿ ಚಾಂಪಿಯನ್ ದಿ ಮೈಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಚಾಂಪಿಯನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಆರ್ಕ್ಟಿಕ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆರ್ಕ್ಟಿಕ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಉತ್ತರ ಧ್ರುವದ ನೆತ್ತಿಯಿಂದ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಧ್ರುವದ ಹೊಕ್ಕಳವರೆಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಅಲ್ಲಿವರೆಗೆ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಇದು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೊಂದು ಸಾವಿರ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ಬಂದು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಅಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಸಮ್ಮರ್ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಅದು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಕಡೆ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ವಿಂಟರ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಕೂಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಟು ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ಹಾರುತ್ತೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನಮಗಿದ್ದಂಗೆ ಯಾವ ನೆವಿಗೇಷನ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಯಾರು ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಕೊಡೋರಿಲ್ಲ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಾಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ನಮಗೆ ಸ್ಯಾಟಲೈಟ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ದಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಯಾಟಲೈಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಕಂಪಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಅಮೇಝಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಪೀಷೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಯು ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಯು ನೋ ಇನ್ ಬೆಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ಡ್ ನಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಲೇಕ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ಡ್ some other 20 30 lakes are so polluted birds can't come here at all and the same is the fate elsewhere also it is not only the the chemical pollution it's the it's the uh, organic pollution also from the cities all the sewer directly goes in there there is a green revolution in a, most of the lakes have become green you know tell me why because human excreta also enters more importantly soaps what we use soaps and detergent in india we produce soaps and detergent using phosphorus you know phosphorus is a chemical fertilizer and all that detergent waste soap waste goes into the lake and lake will have a bloom of all kinds of ipomia and different kinds of weeds there and once weeds start growing there is a suffocation of the biota underneath the water there is a, a abiotic condition there oxygen gets depleted species die they rot the further oxygen depletion and the lake slowly dies and when it dies obviously fish the birds can't come there because there is no fish and when they come all the way from mongolia they come from the way from siberia they come all the way from persia they come here they get disappointed they don't know where to land and they get lost because we are so carelessly using our drain to dump our waste we are using so carelessly all the fertilizers chemical fertilizers three times four times the recommended dose what happens during a rainfall it all gets washed down goes to the nearest river if you go to kaveri now near srirangapatna you can't see water there at all you can see only green mat why tell me it is because excess fertilizer dumping in the ground there it goes there it kills the river streams first fortunately in the next monsoon the stream revives but everywhere it's not the same quite often it's a one way direction now coming to the i, I was showing this yeah all the way from northern hemisphere northern most part to weddell sea down here coming 21000 km non stop flying and going back and there are so many other migratory species also have you butterflies butterflies migrate amazing this is especially monarch butterfly all the way, i'll go to the next slide you know it it from the canada down to latin america it travels up to 5 6000 km not it it starts from canada slowly so from montreal its next generation comes up to <coughs> northern america northern part of the united states and then next generation third generation fourth generation 15th generation reaches latin america down below mexico and again after spending the winter there they start going back remigration beautiful amazing thing and and similarly there's crab migration millions of crabs especially the christian island near pacific um, pacific ocean 
near Australia, even up to Indonesia also, and the crabs migrate. Sometimes, you know, people who are concerned, they block the road and put a sign, road closed, red crab migration is happening, nobody should enter into take deviation course. They, sometimes they also count, you know, see here is a bridge. Can you think of a skywalk for crabs? This is built only for crabs. Crabs slowly climb up, go on to the other side of the road, get down. Amazing thing, isn't it? This is what they do. And they count the number of species. Uh, actually, how many varieties, how many of them, you know, unfortunately, because of pollution and all, quite a number of become, them become mutated with body defects. If we burn too much of plastic, you know what the World Health Organization says? If you keep on inhaling plastic smoke, your next generation can be born with birth defects. You may suffer from diabetes, you may suffer from hypertension, you may suffer from obesity, you may suffer from congenital diseases, cardiovascular diseases, liver disease. 16 kinds of disease are listed regarding the dangers that could happen by burning furon or biphenyl plastic burning. And unknown diseases can spread into the environment. You know, we have seen frag, frogs born without a leg, without a foreleg, without hind leg, without one, one eye at all. We do not know what kind of chemical poison we are sending, which kind of a, you know, a, a, a kind of a, a, what do they call, um, uh, pralaya, the chemical pralaya we are inducing into the atmosphere. Armageddon. So here, these boys, high school boys, go and count the number of, you know, they can't count all the million. Take one square, uh, you know, 10 square meters and count the number of spiders passing through and how many of them have birth defects, how many of them are maimed, how many of them are very healthy. They count that and they pre prevent it. That is the kind of understanding that is required for us. But what do we do? In India, you know, think of the spiders there, think of the, the crabs there. There's so much of respect. In India, look at this condition. Dozens of elephants die in railway track. Despite knowing that this is the migratory season for elephants. Despite informing the forest department, railway department, electricity department, be careful, don't increase the speed of the train, reduce it by only maximum speed should be 15 kilometers. Don't go faster than that. Elephants may cross. This has been, this usually every year, this instruction is passed down to everybody there. But still, they so carelessly drive. And after all, what is this animal? This is our sacred animal, Gajendra, Ganesha, isn't it? In his name, we have God, all kinds of God who is supposed to be the God of intelligence, God of knowledge. Next, look at this. Can you imagine underneath a bridge, railway bridge, an elephant stuck there. Recently, just yesterday or the day before yesterday, we know about an elephant, unfortunate pregnant female ele pregnant elephant. It went to eat a pineapple there and somebody had, uh, had buried a bomb in it. And the elephant ate that, its mouth it got exploded and with unbearable pain it went into a water body and it died after three, four days. What a tragedy, heart rendering thing. But then, yes, electrocution. We care very little. Imagine if you are so careless about such a huge majestic animal like an elephant. How can you treat our butterflies, our bats? our little um, honeybees. You know, one spray of some nicotinoid, neonicotinoid spray for your uh, for your paddy field and all the honeybees are dead. Nobody is there to inform us. And how do we inform? 
how do we empower the people there are any number of people we understand that oh, oh, oh our our is a knowledge economy and we are all aware about everything the farmer may not be aware about the importance of protecting the species he may not be aware of the hazard of picking up any kind of pesticide and spraying it he may not be aware of the existence of ecosystem he may not be aware of the biodiversity at all how are you going to teach him how are we going to tell forget about him we within the city we do not know there is the enormous pockets of ignorance any housewife who keeps old um, wasted food into a carry bag and putting it in, in the roadside she requires awareness any person who puts a matchstick into a heap of waste garbage containing plastic he requires education any person who is going on the roadside crossing through that waste heap being burnt belching smoke if he is watching every person requires education even if he is a lawyer he should be told that this is an illegal happening and according to supreme court we can even file a case against the health worker against the commissioner also but no lawyer is filing any case at all no police is filing any case against no professor no scientist no media person cares for the waste dump caught fire belching smoke 24 hours a day so we need to educate an enormous number of people one day in a year one june fire is not at all sufficient we have to have every day as an environmental day we have to create an awareness for every citizen how do we do it when i say every citizen it's not only a housewife not only the bus conductor not only a police officer not only lawyer and administrator ias officer politician swami ji they all if they are empowered they can really transform the society that's what is happening we are going to israel we are going to new york we are going to sightseeing singapore and Mal hong kong etc why because it's so beautiful every shooting party goes to, to a different area malaysia kuala lumpur because they have kept the nature there why can't we keep the nature like that why can't we make other film shooting party to come out to our country so it is quite possible by creating awareness among teachers among lawyers among accountants among uh, scientists among pilots every profession every walk of life needs to be educated about the environmental importance of our that is why united nations has recommended think about nature nature has solution parisaradalli de parihara bios jeevi vaividhyavada vannu naavu ulskobeku antheli ivattina dina annodu varshada pratidina aagli nivella innu salpa sakashtu interest thagondu nisargada bage ellar jothege maatadbekadre ನಾವು ಮಾತಾಡೋದು ಏನು ಹೆಚ್ಚಾಗಿ ಪ್ರೈಸ್ ರೈಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಯ್ಯೋ ಇವತ್ತು ಮಳೆ ಬಂತ ನಿಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತೀವಿ ನಿಮ್ಮೂರು ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಪೇಪರ್ ನಿಮ್ಮೂರು ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತೀವಿ ನಿಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ತರಕಾರಿ ಬೆಳೆ ಹೇಗಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತೀವಿ ಹಾಗೆ ನಿಮ್ಮೂರಿನ ಕೆರೆ ಹೇಗಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಬೇಕು ನಿಮ್ಮೂರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ವರ್ಷ ಬರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಬಂದ್ವಾ ಹೋದ ವರ್ಷ ಎಲ್ಲ ಬಲಿ ಪೆಲಿಕನ್ಸ್ ಬಂದಿದ್ವಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಬೇಕು ನಿಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಫ್ರಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಂಗವಿಕಲತೆ ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಾ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಬೇಕು ನಿಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಈ ವರ್ಷ ಹೋದ ವರ್ಷ ಆ ಮಳೆಗಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತಲ್ಲ ನೀಲಿ ಪರಿಮಳದ ಗ್ರಾ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಅದು ಈ ವರ್ಷನೂ ಇದೆಯಾ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಡೆಸರ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ನೀತ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ಅಬೌಟ್ ಯುಕ್ಲಿಪ್ಟಸ್ ಡೆಸರ್ಟ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ಅಬೌಟ್ ಗ್ರೀನ್ ಡೆಸರ್ಟ್ ಮೌಂಟನ್ ಟಾಪ್ ಡೆಸರ್ಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಡೆಸರ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನೌ ಫೇಸಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಸೀರಿಯಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ವಾಸ್ ಡೆಸರ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ನೀತ್ ಅದು ನಮಗೆ ನಮ್ಮನ್ನ ತೊಟ್ಟುವಂತ ವಿಷಯ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಹೌ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೀಸೈಕಲ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಹೌ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೀಸೈಕಲ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಬಟ್ ರೀಸೈಕಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹಿಂದಿನ ಕಾಲದ ಜನ ಹೇಗೆ ನಿಸರ್ಗಕ್ಕೆ 
ದೈವತ್ವವನ್ನು ಕೊಟ್ಟು ನಿಸರ್ಗನ ಸಿಂಧ್ಯಾವರು ಆಗ್ಲೇ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಪಂಚಭೂತಗಳನ್ನ ಹೇಗ ಆರಾಧಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಆ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ರಿಚ್ ಸೈಕಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಏಜ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಚ್ ಸೈಕಲ್ ಐ ವಿಶ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಶ್ ಯು ಅಗೇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಎನ್ವೈರ್ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಡೇ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲಿಸನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಪೇಶಂಟ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಕಾರ್ತಿಕ್ ಜಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮಧು ಜಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಕಮಿಷನರ್ ಸಿಂಧ್ಯಾ ಅವರೇ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಟುಕ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಎ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ ಮಧು 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 ಜಿ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ನಾಗೇಶ್ ಸರ್ ಹಲೋ ಯು ಓನ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ ಮಧು ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ನೋ ಯು ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ ಯಾರ್ ವೈ on behalf of uh, bharat scout sindhya karnataka all our young people and uh, our scout friends i take this privilege to thank you sir for uh, sharing your valuable knowledge um, i was just looking to the comments what uh, many of the uh, viewers were sharing they said you took them to places where they could not have been to and uh, the kind of uh, knowledge i saw one uh, uh, person telling that i never knew that king cobra will not bite so these are the informations what is coming out from you and these are the realities of nature and it was definitely a wonderful um, piece of information uh, on this occasion of uh, world environment day where the theme is biodiversity you took them all and made them understand what is biodiversity and definitely sir in future also we expect many more informative uh, brain knowledge enhancing sessions from you whenever you find time kindly come and uh, uh, enrich the knowledge of our uh, young minds thank you sir thank you for your valuable time thank you thank you thank you we can conclude madhu yes sir